again, Andy Roberts here from distributedresearch.net. In another tutorial, tutorial in the series about Seashore Image Editor. And today we're going to look at one tool in particular. First, I'm going to call up a photograph that I need to do some editing on. So I've opened the photograph in Seashore. It's called Thames Barrier can't see the whole photograph at the moment so the first thing we're going to have to do is zoom out. Um, the zoom tool, the Z key, does the zoom. But that's zooming in. I want to zoom out so uh, maybe it's Shift and Z. Control Z, Alt Z. Alright, I can't find the shortcut zoom out key so what do I do in those circumstances? I could go to the help Maybe I can go to one of the other menus. Edit, no. Image, ah look. Image zoom in, image zoom out. So it's the propeller or command key, I think it's called, and down arrow. So let's try that. Down arrow, down arrow, down arrow. There we are. Now I've got the whole picture in the view of this uh, this screencast so we can see. So what is it about this picture I want to change? Well it's a it's a nice picture of the um, the Thames barrier, one of the the big mechanisms for raising up the Thames barrier. The problem I've got with it is down in this left hand corner there's a bit of wash the wake from the boat that I was in when I was taking the photograph and I feel that that distracts slightly from the main focus of the picture which should be on the barrier rather than on the on the water so I'd like to get rid of this wash and this is a great opportunity to show you how to use the clone tool which is this one here looks like a a rubber stamp it's a stamp and what the clone tool will do is copy from one part of a picture and paste to another so if I double click on the clone tool, look at the options, it says the source is unset, use sample small layers, I want that, uh, can change the brush size. <coughs> so it takes from one place and to another, I'll give you an example, if I just click here nothing's happening because I haven't set the source yet. So in the tiny grey letters, rather faint here, it says you can select the source point by clicking with the shift key down. So hold down the shift key, key and click. Did you see it made a little uh, red cross to say that's where you selected the source from? So at the moment the source is in the middle of the the metallic shell of the barrier and if I click somewhere else now it'll start pasting that there. So see what the clone tool does, it copies from one place to another. So I've now taken a, a great lump of the Thames barrier and pasted it in the sky. That was just to show you what the clone tool does. I'll undo that using Edit Undo, which has the handy keyboard short key that's the same in lots of applications. Command Z. So Z and it's gone. <coughs> So that's what the clone key does. So down here I can take some of the water where the, where the background is quite repetitive like sky or a row of trees. In this case water with some reflections on. It's repetitive down. So I can take the water from above the wash. Shift and click. So I'll put the X there and then just paste it down below. And that's working quite nicely. So now a bit at a time I'm just pasting along the top. And of course the so the source moves with the brush, so it's it's all relative. So it's always pasting in from what's just a little bit above where we were. Whoops, the last bit uh, 
works. Yeah, so now the next bit I can do it again. Shift click just down a little bit. And I'm just pasting it in. Yeah, shift oops. Shift click down a bit. Holding the uh, the clicker down all the time as I'm pasting in. There, that's done the whole thing. A tiny bit more, just along the bottom. Now, in it, it's not perfect. If you zoomed in on this, if you zoomed right in, um, what was it? Apple and up arrow. If we zoom right in on that corner, you you would sort of notice that it's a repeating pattern rather than a, a more sort of random thing. But it's good enough to it's good enough to not see what was there before. So um, zoom further out. And now, for, for the purposes of an illustration on the website, that, that would then give me a, an acceptable picture that hasn't got the, the distracting thing. It's similar if you've got a something in the sky that you don't want to be there, you know, like a power cable going across or a, a, a sign or something. You can just use the clone tool to spread the background back over something that you don't want in the foreground and that's the clone tool in Seashore image editor for Mac. I can now save that picture and I've got a picture without the distracting bit of wash at the front. Hope you found that useful. See you next time for the next Seashore image editor tutorial by Andy Roberts of Distributed Research. See you next time. Bye for now.